everyone, I'm Leticia from Jewels for You and welcome back to one more of my tutorials. Today, as you can see on your screen, we're going to be making this beautiful crochet necklace and I had been telling you that I was going to show you new techniques on, uh, well, we would be adding more um, crochet stitches to make the necklace look different. And as you can see on this one, it is quite different from the others that we have made because of the fact that you can see three distinctive rows of beads and um, they are separate. Like the first row is all the same beads, the second row is all the same beads, and the third row is all the same beads. And of course the beads keep, uh, they get bigger as you go down. And this has, you know, a uh, reason to be. Two things about this necklace, or let me just point out a few things. Okay, right now you can see that the necklace is a little wavy. And that's perfectly normal because um, you don't add more beads as you go on. You have the same amount of beads. I have the same amount of beads here as in the second row as in the first row. The only thing is that when, um, since the beads keep getting bigger, they keep adding length. And that is the reason why the necklace um, doesn't, ha you don't have to make extra stitches or anything else. But at the end, it will look a bit wavy, but once you put it around your neck, it'll drape perfectly, I promise you. Now, um, I used golden toned wire for this necklace, and I used these very thin um, beads that you can see here for the top beads and I use these these are at, were actually square beads when I saw them but then um, when I got home I saw that the um, hole actually went in from one of the um, edges of the square to the other edge of the square so that when you um, when you run your thread through it or your wire through it it goes in and forms like a die it forms uh, the diamond shape and then, of course, the last row are pearls. I added a clasp, a very simple toggle clasp. And you can see that we have we, this, even though it looks more or less like the braided part of the other necklaces that we have made, it's not braided. And I will be showing you how to make that as well. So this is what we will be making. I had never made a yellow necklace before, and I really like the way it looks and it looks really pretty put on when you put it on oh another part about another thing about this necklace is that it does have a back part okay it has a back and it has a front in the front you can see that the beads are all showing in the back you see a lot more wire okay so you got to be careful with that and another um, announcement that I want to make, I have more shares um, of subscribers that have been sending me necklaces. One of them is again from Nilda, which uh, goes by Mean B98. She sent me another picture of that necklace that I showed you in my last video, but now um, her, I, I don't know, somebody from her family is wearing it. It's a young girl, so you can see that it hangs a little bit lower on her. But there's much better lighting, and you can see the colors much better, and it's really pretty. Okay, that is one of the pictures. Then I have two more pictures of another subscriber called Myra LeBlanc, and she is from Canada, and she's uh, she made a lilac or a pink... Um, Pink with lilac. I'm not sure. It's it's pink with a very light uh, colored purple and other beads in the necklace. And she made it following the same example uh, as my tutorial. Uh, the pink with the where um, where I show you how to make that pink crochet necklace. And um, 
then she made another one, a much simpler one, where she uses uh, different kinds of beads, she uses different colors of beads, and she uses a very colorful pendant. The necklace looks very simple, but I loved it. I don't know, it, it's just very pretty. And she used um, silver colored wire to make that necklace. And I will be showing you the pictures right now, so here we go. Okay, well, um, I'm back. Thank you so much for watching. And as you can see, I made annotations. I could not do a voiceover. So uh, just read the annotations and all the explanations are there. Now let's put this necklace aside and I will be showing you how to make this necklace. The first thing that you're going to need are 30 size 6 um, rondelles. Now these rondelles are very particular because they, um, let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see if you can see this. Focus, come on. Okay, it's um, partly black. The bead is partly black but then when you turn it on the side it's got like a silver covering so on one side it's black um it's half black and half silver so it was perfect for my project and it's a size six um rondelle or onion bead or however you want to call it and then um let me zoom out now a bit okay and then I'm going to be using these size 8 rondelles as well. These are silver colored. And no AB finish, no nothing. They're just simple silver um, colored rondelles. And the last bead I'm going to use is this round um, bead. It I thought it was just made out of glass, but then I found out that... Um, it does have um, a coating. It's, it is made out of glass, but it has a coating. It's not exactly a pearl. Uh, it's, um, it's just a round bead. It looks, like, it looks just like any other round bead made of glass, but it does have a coating. So if, uh, and you can tell, in, if you look in the hole, there it there you can see that it has a coating so if i move it um if i start scratching it that covering will come off but okay so it was too late when i found out that um that this what had a covering on it that it was not just a black glass bead so i'm going to use it anyway uh, uh it the problem with um, these kind of beads 
is that when they rub against something like maybe uh, crystals or um, well mostly against crystals um, they get scratched and sometimes the covering comes off but since um, as you can see very clearly in the necklace the they're not going to rub against anything because they're completely separate if anything they will rub against each other um, and that will not affect it at all and of course they do rub a little bit against the wire that's not going to take off the covering either so we're good there and uh, another thing that you're going to need of course is your beading wire this time we're going to use size 26 gauge uh, beading wire I'm using titanium this uh, it's a silver toned it, it is a silver tone but I couldn't find my silver silver one uh, so I'm using titanium and of course it matches well with the as long as it matches well with the beads if you can find black they, they do sell beading wire which is uh, I mean um, yeah beading wire which is black and that would that would look really awesome I couldn't find any so I just bought this one which is titanium color of course you're going to be needing a ruler or a measuring tape because we are going to have to measure the length the first only the length on this very very first row okay once we have this first row measured out then you can do away with the ruler or the measuring tape and you're going to be using some cutters and your chain nose pliers you're not going to be needing your round nose pliers and of course your crochet hook and i don't have my crochet hook just hold one second i'll be right back okay so here's my crochet hook I'm using a size 5 crochet hook this time. Uh, for those of you that have seen my videos before, you know that I usually use a size 6 crochet hook. This one is a size 5 because I do need it to be a little bit smaller. I could have used a smaller one, but um, I didn't want to. I mean, I thought that this was a good choice so a size 5 if you usually use a size 5 then uh, choose a smaller size maybe a 4.5 of a, a 4 um, uh, but don't go too too small otherwise your necklace will come out all scrunched up so let's begin our tutorial um, we begin of course by putting all our beads into our wire by stringing all our beads and like I said, we're going to be using 30 beads to start off with, and these are size 6. You can use a size 5 as well, and uh, they could be rounds also, um, if that's what you wish, but um, start with 30. And once we measure it out, once we measure uh, the length that you want, um, um, then you can take the other ones away after you finish your strand. Now, um, I'm making a 17 and a half inch necklace. So, one thing is very important when you're measuring this. Remember that I told you in a previous video that these two ends, these two crochet ends, since we still make a, the eight chain stitches, uh, they still measure 2.5 inches each so that is 5 inches for both of them so that's 5 inches you already have in the necklace and then add an additional inch for your clasp if you're not using a toggle clasp if you're using a bigger clasp or any other kind of clasp be sure to measure it and add that to your 5 inches and then after you do that then you're just going to add the remaining amount of inches that you need to make the size of necklace that you want. I hope um, I made myself clear now. Okay, so uh, like I said before, we're going to start 
by stringing our beads into the wire and that's going to be 30 beads that we're going to string and once I finish putting them in the wire I'll be back okay so I have my 30 beads already strung on my wire and we're going to do what we always do which is measure either with your hook or eyeball it whichever you want um, about 10 to 12 inches of wire and we're going to make our little loop where we're going to insert our hook remember it's only like two twists we insert our hook and then we start making our crochet stitches now uh, for those of you that have never crocheted before this first stitch is a chain stitch and all you have to do is go under your wire of course you hold the wire bet uh, between your index finger and your middle finger and um, and you just grasp it with your pinky and um, just to just to just enough to make it easy to maneuver with and then you go under the wire hook it up and then just pass it through the loop we just made and there you go that's our first chain stitch then we're going to make eight so that's one two three four five six six seven eight so we have our initial eight chain stitches like we always make then we're going to pull up this first row is basically um, the same we make all the time you know you pull up your bead you make a crochet uh, a chain stitch I'm sorry around it then you pull up another bead and you crochet you make another chain stitch another bead and another crochet stitch and that's what you're going to do until you get to about your 25th or your 26th let's say your 27th bead okay do this until um, you get to your 27th bead so once I'm there I'll be back okay so I'm back and I crocheted my 27 beads and I have my ruler here and I already and I'm measuring from um, let me take out the hook okay so I'm going to measure from this last bead that I crocheted right now all the way to my first chain stitch and I have here a little bit more than 11 and a half inches so let me do um, the math here I have put here that I have five inches of chain I have five inches of chain uh, counting the two pieces the two ends with the eight chain stitches so that's five inches because each one it measures 2.5 on you know on my crochet the, the way I crochet so I have five inches right there then I met I, I gave a 1.5 1.5 inches one and a half inch for my clasp I still don't know what kind of clasp I'm going to use but I gave it a 1.5 just in case I decide to use a bigger clasp or make my own 
Um, now I know that since this measure is a little bit more than I expected, I'm gonna have to need, I'm gonna have to uh, use a one inch clasp because otherwise my neck my necklace might come out too long or maybe I'll just leave it like that. But okay, so um, this two together measures six point five inches. Okay, and if I subtract from 17 and a half inches, which is the length I want my necklace, if I subtract the six and a half inches that I have um, already like as a default from the eight chain stitches and the uh, clasp, okay, so I'm supposed to have 11 inches. There's supposed to be 11 inches um, of beaded wire. I'm sorry. So yeah, I made a mistake. Okay, I'll let you know why. So I need 11 inches of beaded wire. So this part, only the beaded wire should be 11 inches. Let me measure again how much I, how many more beads I'm going to be needing. Okay, so I have Right now I have nine and a half, so I think I will be using all 30 of them. So let me pull up the three remaining ones, the three remaining ones, and I'm going to add them to my crocheting. So that's 27, I had 27, this is 28, then... Twenty-nine. Uh oh, what is this? Twenty-nine, and then the last one. Thirty. Thirty. Okay. So I have thirty beads in my strand. Now let me measure how much that is with my ruler. It's supposed to be 11 inches, okay? So I have from here to this end and it's 11 inches. There. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so it's 11 inches. Okay, so I have my 11 inches. I don't need my ruler anymore. And now we're going to finish this strand by crocheting the last eight, eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, uh, remember that we always make a ninth one to pull it through. We just uh, pull out the wire a little bit and we measure another 10 to 12 inches, depending on how much you want and how long you want your tail. And we cut it. use our cutters and we cut that strand okay then we go back to where we left our stitch half made and we just pull it through this is called a slip knot okay and we just pull on it and that leaves a knot on our crocheting and that um, this is not going anywhere now one different thing that we're going to do with this necklace is that right now we're going to straighten it out not at the end we need to straighten it out right now so that's what we're going to do we're going to put all our beads facing towards the front of the necklace towards the top making sure that they're all facing up and that they're all even later on we can maneuver with the wire um, once the necklace, you know, as we go along in the necklace, we can maneuver with the wire, accommodating them, you know, putting them in their place and moving them around and whatever. But right now it's very important 
that all our beads are facing up, okay? To start our second stitch. Now to start our second row, I'm sorry, our second row. To start our second row, we're gonna do basically the same thing, but just at the beginning. Okay, so we're going to start by threading. Since we used 30 here, we're going to use 30 for the second row. So once I thread them on my wire, I'll be back. 